everyone. Bola Vanaka, welcome to week 13 of Clarkie's Corner, where we chat about the Shop and Save, Super Rugby Pacific, the Swire Shipping, Fiji and Drua, and whatever rugby topics come up. Not a great week for Fiji rugby. The drill went down to the force. The men's and women's sevens teams had their issues in Toulouse, but at least the men did qualify for the Paris Olympics next year, and more on that later. And a special guest this week has kindly found some time to chat to us in his very busy schedule, Namani Nandolo. Welcome, Bula Vanaka. How are you? Bula, Greg. Thanks, Clarky. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, really good. Um, thanks for having me on the show. Well, where do we start? I, I guess we should remind fans that you have announced your retirement. You're hanging up the boots at the end of this season. A tough decision, no doubt. Yeah, 100%. It was, it was a very... Um... You know, it's, it's not an easy decision to make. I guess it's when you've been doing something for the last fifteen years, or you know, um, you know, you've got to, you know, it's, it's something you don't want. You don't like change, but at the same time, you know, I'm ready for a new challenge, and it's something that um, I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, I'd like to think that you know I've done everything that I set out to do in the game that I can control um, first and foremost. So, you know, and it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm. Um, getting ready for that, that life after rugby. And, uh, but yeah, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And, you know, once I made the decision, it's, uh, you know, it, it's a weight off, uh, weight off my shoulders. Well, let's recap, Bernardo, because you were born in rugby town, Singatoka, but moved to Australia when you were three. You attended the great rugby nursery, Nudgee College in Brisbane, uh, which has got this running battle with uh, Joey's in Sydney to see who produces the most uh, wallabies. And it's uh, pretty much even Stevens at the moment, I believe. Did anyone else from your year at Nudgee or from your Queensland junior rep teams kick on in rugby? Yeah, unfortunately for... For my year, I didn't really. I, I made the. I, can't, I just made the Queensland schoolboys, and then um, you know that was probably about it. But yeah, uh, my year at Nudgee, we had Will Chambers, who went on to play. I had a successful uh, career at rugby league. I think he played some union as well. Um, and yeah, my year that year we, we had particularly up in Queensland, we had Will Genya, David Pocock, Quade Cooper. That I played with Quade, um, you know, juniors growing up and. Uh, Rob Simmons, you know, the list goes on. It was a very healthy year that year in terms of talent that came through. And, um, you know, you know they were, they're household names now, um, you know, in, in, in Australian rugby. So, yeah, it was a very, it was a very successful year in terms of the talent that came through, which was, um, you yeah, know, which was good for that. Yeah. Now, Chris Kurandrani is your brother. Tavita Kurandrani and Lottie Tenkiri are cousins. So rugby's in the blood. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it it is. It's in the blood, and you know, not 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 to forget um, Ili Ili Seven Batimbasanga, who's a Waratahs legend. Uh, played for the Warroos as well. So, you know, I, I come from a, a village called Natakula village, which we call it amongst ourselves a rugby factory. Um, so, you know, rugby is definitely in the blood, and um, you know, we've uh, gone on to do good things. I think. Um... Uh, Batama Sanga also reckons that she's the best out of all of you. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll say the same thing. She's, she's definitely more fitter than all of us. Okay. How's the recovery? Speaking of fitness, how's the recovery from your knee injury come along? Uh, I know you had the clean out, uh, the operation about a month ago. They said it could be four to eight weeks. So, how close are you? Is, is, um, I'm not too far away now. Um, you know, hopefully, get some um, if all goes well. I'll get some game time uh, minutes uh, down at club rugby, and um, you know. But yeah, it was something I've always, um, you know, I like to think that I like to people wrong. So when they told me that it was, you know, going to be a long time, I, I, I said, well, we'll see how we go. And yeah, you know, again, coming to the woods, the end of my career, I've done what I can in my control to to get it right, and um, yeah, it, it's come along really well, Clarky, and 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 definitely. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised myself that you know I put myself through to to get it right. Yeah, well, you mentioned club rugby. You're going to be playing uh, in club rugby at the Two Blues, Parramatta, and the Shoot Shield in Sydney. But you've been at what Randwick? You've been at Manly as well. So why the why yeah. para? No, I just felt a, a, an urge. Um, you know, when I was when I was coming, but I knew I was coming back. I just felt a you know an urge in, inside my heart and help. Um, you know, West Sydney rugby, uh, particularly out there, there's a lot of um, 
a lot of guys that come from the South Pacific, you know, from the islands, where so are more Tonga or Fiji, and you know, I just, I don't know, I just, for me, it wasn't about rugby. I think going out there it was more so about the next generation, and particularly in a in, in an area where it's league dominant. Um, you know, you lose a lot of kids to to to, to get union, and um, you know, something for me that I wanted to do was to um, you know, go out there and help out where I can, and um, particularly the grassroots. I, I whenever I get time, I'm I'm heavily involved with the junior rugby out there, uh, the West Sydney Two Blues Junior Rugby, and yeah, again, it, it it's something that you know I want to do to give back to the game. It's my way of giving back, and you know, someone like myself who's uh, Fijian heritage can can go out there and and help, um, you know, something and take a lot, you know, give back to experiences I've um, got along the way in my rugby career, then, you know, and, um, it, you know, it's definitely something um, that, that may happen. Uh, yeah, so I really wanted to get out there with Sydney and, um, you know, I really enjoy it. It's kind of like, an, it's kind of like being around family and, uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a good feeling going out there and, um, you yeah, know, sense of, uh, I don't know, gratitude, I guess. How much improvement do the Tars have them when you think about your current Super Rugby Pacific team? Is top four still the target? Well, I don't – look, we yeah, we probably didn't start too well this year as, as we probably wanted to, as we hoped to, but I think maybe top four probably out of the question for us. I think for us, just, you know, trying to finish as high as we can, um, whatever that is. Uh, but, you know, I think we, we're – starting to hit our straps now and um you know we've got what three games to go uh, including this week and uh, the, the boys are starting to to gel i think for us it was um obviously we wanted to, to the, the the end goal is to, to play finals here and um you know in a team in a competition where there's uh you know 12 teams and an eight uh, final it's uh you know for us it's it's it's, it's a non-negotiable yeah. Yeah, you are stringing some wins together. The retire. What did you make of their effort against the Rebels last week? That was three wins on the trot. Yeah, it was it was really good. We actually um you know, we didn't start well. Um we didn't start well, but you know, we finished well towards the end. I think that's the most important thing is um uh, getting you know, it's it's how you finish and um well our forwards stood up. And uh, yeah, I just thought our defense was uh, was uh, was really good, and it showed there towards the um, you know the last sort of passage, uh, the last sort of the last twenty minutes of the game. Yeah. Mate, uh, providing the knee comes right, you get through some club rugby. Uh, what role would you like to play at the Tars in the coming weeks? Do you see yourself as a starter or or a finisher? Uh, more as finisher, I think the boys. You know, we got Mark Nawangini Tawate and. Uh, and Dylan Peter Ping and um, you know, for me it's just probably at this stage is, is just trying to be a finisher, coming on, give some impact um where I can. So uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully you haven't seen the the last of me at Super Rugby and, and um you know I'll get my opportunity. But again, Clark, you know, that sort of stuff is out of my control and all I can do is just sort of um you know, just keep doing what I'm doing and um hopefully I'll get my crack. Yeah, get yourself right. Uh, as someone with a proud Fijian heritage, you've already mentioned that. What what do you think about the the, the draw finally being in elite competition? Oh, it's you know as, as a Fijian, as a proud Fijian, someone who's you know blessed, who's been fortunate enough to play for Fiji, see uh, an elite team or a professional team um, come out of Fiji, and to see the young talent come through, oh, it just makes me so happy. It makes me um, proud for starters because. You know, I think it's something we've always wanted. Um, you know, we've always played in the Fiji. You know, we've always had Warriors and played in the NRC. But you know, I always believed that Fiji deserved a, a professional team. Um, you know, they got everything sorted and got their um, affairs in, in order. And for it to happen, you know, it, it's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like a fairy tale um, story. And uh, you know, it still is. You, you've got, you know, you always hear stories of, of guys coming through, kids coming through that have never been on a plane, you know, and then you put them on a rugby field 
I don't know, say somewhere in New Zealand, they score two tries sort of thing, and you got guys who are farmers or policemen, and and the uh, you know they go from that into professional environment, and you know they, they do very well, and so it's kind of a feel good story, but you know it's something as a as a Fijian, not only, and I I think I speak for a lot of Fijians um, around the world, is that you know it's, we're proud to as a country finally have a professional outfit that can compete um you know at the elite level i think it goes without saying that the fiji and drew are your second team and hopefully your first team when you finally hang up the boots but who's from the, the drew this season gee some of the guys have really really stood up especially at home we've got to get them playing like that on, on the road but, um who's impressed you um for me yeah uh, look I've, i'm really impressed with uh who melly that no longer like that's really impressed me about him is, is his leadership. Um, you know, something, you know, he's fairly young as well. So, he's, you know, he's got a got a big task, um, you know, leading the troops around. And, you know, for me, playing in Fiji team, I always find that being the captain or being, a, you know, particularly a Fijian team, it, it's never easy. You know, I've seen it first. And uh, he's been, I think he's, he's been injured for a while and, but when he comes in, you can see the leadership. He he, uh, I think he leads through his actions, and you know the, the scary thing is he, he's only going to get better. And um, you know, like you said, they don't travel too well, um, you know, down under or across the ditch. But at home, the the fortress the stuff they're building over there, you know, it's funny. I tell these boys, I said, we're lucky we didn't go to Fiji because you know it's it's never easy playing there, let alone playing against them. Um, but no, I think there's uh, and there's others as well. I think another one that's that's really impressed me is uh, uh, Matawalu. Um, you know, when he comes on at nine, he really you know controls the game, and he's got that energy and he's fiery like every other you know like any little halfback is. Um, but you know, I just know I know him personally as well off the field. He's the biggest larrikin going around. So it's funny when I see him on the field trying to, you know, push and shove them. It's just like, mate, you need to take it easy. <laughs> yeah, but Humbussy was was let go in the, the off-season. My goodness, big shoes to fill. And then all of a sudden, Rabu Taumanda steps up and Yosef uh, Masi uh, has been incredible. Revo is developing even further. And then you've got Volta in, in, in the background. You mentioned young Teniela Rokuro, who hadn't been on a plane before. He jumps on the plane, goes, he scores, scores a double. Um, and, and then you've got, you know, some of the other sevens boys, um, Aroni Sao, et cetera, uh, in, in the wings as well. So uh, it's a production line, isn't it, the, the backs in Fiji? 100%. I think this is why it's so, you know, so that we've got, or they've got the Fiji Indura, um as a professional team on the island because it, it, it you know, produces guys like, you know, then – He's, you know, historically or traditionally, it used to be, you know, you'd play well, then you'd go and play in Europe. That's where you notice. Whereas here, it's like, you know, you can play on the island. And um, again, like you said, it, it's just, they're just churning him out. And, um, you know, it's only, it's, it, the one thing is, it, it all leads to the national team. And I think this is what's great about it. It's only going to make the national team stronger, which is, you know, ultimately what we want is to be competing, you know, with the best tier one nations in the world. I was disappointed with the draw in Perth last week, the game against the Force. It was there for the taking at half time, but once again, they just couldn't keep it going on the road. Is that simply a lack of experience or is it a mental thing, a learning thing? It's only year two. Yeah, it, it could be multiple of things, to be fair, Clark. You know, it could be a high beating the, uh, the Hurricanes. You know, they're, they're a team that's beaten. Um, more Kiwi teams than the Aussie team. You know, I mean, as in like, like out of the Aussie teams, they've beaten more Kiwi teams. So, mate, yeah, it could be a, it could be a lot of things. Being on a high, coming the travel as well. Uh, um, but you know, I watched that game last week, and you're right. They, they first half, first forty minutes, they were great. I think second half, they sort of the wheels started falling off uh, uh, for whatever reason. But um, you know, I think. I think I put it down to learning experience. Um, you know, you got to remember some of these guys have never been in a professional setup, let alone big matches. So um, 
but in saying that, they've come leaps and bounds from last year to now where, you know, they're just stringing maybe won a game or if, you know, they won a few games. Whereas this year, they're actually contenders to make the top eight. So, you know, it, you know, you, you put it down to probably experience and, and, um, and learning. And the quicker they learn, because um, experience will come, learn, play those big games, the uh, the more dangerous they're going to be. So thankfully, I'm going to be done by them, and uh, I'll be the I'll be able to be watching them rather than playing against them. Good on you. Now running through week twelve results in the Super Rugby Pacific, uh, the Reds ended the Chiefs beaten twenty five twenty two in New Plymouth. A real gutsy win that one. Force thirty four to fourteen over the Drua. Canes hammered Moana seventy one twenty two. Chris beat the Blues fifteen three. Tars thirty eight to twenty over the Rebels and the Brumbies forty eight to thirty two over the uh, Highlanders. Uh, so four wins uh, by the Aussie teams last weekend. Eddie Jones will be grinning from ear to ear, no doubt. One hundred percent. I think old Eddie would, um, you know, actually doesn't like losing to to Kiwi teams, you know, against against the Chief. And you know, for me, I watched the game. It wasn't it wasn't that they were better, more skillful or more talented. I think you know, I'd be fair to say that the Chiefs were way more than skillful, but the Reds showed guts. Um, the Reds showed a never never die attitude, and I think that's that's the sort of thing that Eddie, Eddie wants: is guys who are going to put their body on the line. And fair play to the Reds; they went over there, and I someone was telling me that they were paying like dollars something to win the game. So, you know, they, that that shows you a little bit about how much you know. Faith, uh, you know, the the well, had it's the Reds uh, for the Reds going over there to win, and they got over there, they did the job, and you know, like, like I said, fair play. Um, it's not easy to, to get up to go to New Zealand and and win, let alone beat the the undefeated uh, Chiefs, who um, who have been phenomenal all year. So, um, yeah, look, Eddie's going to be happy with that I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to use it as uh, you know. Uh, I guess a standard of, of level of grits of what you got to do to to um, to get picked in his squad. Despite the hiccup, are the Chiefs still the team to beat? Despite their first loss, one hundred percent. I think uh, for me, it's the Chiefs are going to be there thereabouts. The Cast the Crusaders, the you know the most um, successful team in the Super Rugby. So when it comes to finals, they know how to turn it on. But for me, I think. Um, Look, I'd like to see the Brumbies um, get up there. They're, they're, they're traveling really well, and to get a, hopefully that you know they can see and you know be good for for rugby in Australia. So, you know, as much as I'd want to see, you know, everyone talks about the Chiefs and the Crusaders, you know, the Blues taking it out. Look, I'd like to see um, if it if it's not the Waratahs, uh, I'd like to see an Australian team, you know, um, get up there and and um, you know hopefully make the final. What about this week? Three weeks to go the regular season. Moana host your old team, Crusaders. Another tough one for Moana. And on the subject of Crusaders, you gained 39 caps for them over a few seasons. You were equal top try scorer with Israel Folau back in 2014. I think it was 12 tries apiece. Uh, that year, Crusaders went all the way to the final, only to lose narrowly past. Mate, how did you enjoy your stint in Christchurch? I was great. It was literally, it was like a... It was like a I was... Yeah. It was, like, it was like I was in a fantasy world, to be fair, when I, when I first over there. You know, kept being from Australia, I've said this many times, I, I always thought it was going to come back here. But when the Crusaders gave me my opportunity and, and sort of believed in me and, you know, said, go out and do your thing, uh, it was just, you know, yeah, it was some of the uh, the most enjoyable time of my career, to be fair. And, you know, as you know, down there in Christchurch, there's not much down there, particularly after the earthquake as well. So, um you know, there wasn't too much going on. So it was all about rugby and you eat, sleep and, um, you know, you eat, sleep and, and, and watch rugby down there. So, yeah, it was, it was good times. And I guess also too made it easier when, when you're playing against some of the, playing with uh, some of the, you know, some of the legends of the game in Richard McCaw and Dan Carter and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I went over there more as a sort of an experienced player, like a development player, sorry, to get some experience and head back to Japan and, you know, a few injuries happened and I was thrust it straight in there. And, uh, yeah, I guess the rest is history. And, look, it, it, was, it was a 
like I said, some of the most enjoyable time of my career. Sounds like it is the best club you've played for, and you've played for a few, Burgoyne, Exeter, uh, Green Rocks, uh, Montpellier, Leicester Tigers, so um, uh, that's a big wrap for the Crusaders. Mate, the, uh, this week, Reds versus the Blues at Suncorp Friday, uh, a crunch game for both. Blues hoping to stay in touch with the top four. The Reds hoping to cement that place in the top eight. Blues captain Dalton Bapali'i uh, suspended for three weeks, um, and, and that'll be a big loss, but this is a big game for the Reds. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a huge job. Uh, a um, huge game for them, you know, probably not not being involved, you know, be, being their leader. Look, if the Reds can um, play like they played last week, um, you know, and show some, some courage and guts, I think they're going to be a room. But at the same time, you know, it's the Blues are dangerous whether they play away or at home and um, they've owned that through the season. So it's going to be a hard game, but uh, hopefully... Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, that the Reds will get what they want. And a tip here, mate. The Highlanders, Rebels in Dunedin on Saturday. Both teams, 15 points, and out of the eight, neither can afford to drop this one. Rebels might be up to impress Eddie again and uh, win across the ditch. Yeah, 100%. You know, you got, um, the Rebels will be disappointed last week's loss. Um, but, um, you know, with Carter Gordon playing really well at the moment, it's going to be a... Um, you know, hope, you know, hopefully with Carter Gordon playing again, and you know, they're going to heavily rely on him to to direct them around, and you know, hopefully they can uh, come away with the win. So, like, uh, it'll be good for for the Australian teams to to do well this uh-huh. week. Chiefs and the Hurricanes in Hamilton on Saturday, match of the round, no doubt. First versus third, who wins that one? Oh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be a tough one. I'm I'm going to go. No, I'm going to go the Chiefs. They'll be a bit. They'll be very angry from, um, you know, last week's loss. So they're going to, you know, probably get a. Um, you you'll probably see a a reaction and, yeah. Look, like I said, I think despite the Chiefs losing last week, they're, they're probably the the red hot um, team. They're the hot. You know, they're the red hot team at the moment. So. I think I'm going to get the Okay, Chiefs here's here. one for you. The Tars are at home in Sydney taking on the Drua. What are you expecting from the Drua? Are you confident your team, the Tars, can make it four on the trot? Uh, yeah, 100%. First and foremost, hopefully the look, the, the Drua will be disappointed last week. Um, they came out and, um, you know, they'll be disappointed with, with their loss against the Force. So, the, the you know, they, that Burnsy would have probably got into them this week and, um, you know, the, you'll expect a reaction. Um, at the same time, uh, we we we've got a we've got our work cut out in terms of how they play. They're very, you know, you give them you give them a meter, they'll take it, and um, you know. So we've been training really hard this week on it, and it's going to be it's going to be a good game again. Uh, the Drua, um, we'll, we'll, you know, so I think it's the last game before they go home, so they're going to want to um, come out and all guns blazing. So I think for us, it's just making sure that. You know, we stick to our game plan and and keep that 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 penalty count low, um, and then you know hopefully we can we can come away with the win. So unfortunately, Clarky, I'm going to go. We're going to we're going to win this one this week. Okay, well I expect that from you this year, but uh, that's it after that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big double header at Allianz Stadium on Saturday because the Fijiana 15s play a test against the the Wallaroos, who have just named a new captain in Piper Duck. So congratulations to her going forward. Uh, that's the early game, the Wallaroos against Fijiana. And let's hope that Fijiana can carry on the great work of the Fijian Drua in Super W. And you must have been impressed with uh, the, the Fijiana Drua in Super W. What a comeback. 100, 100%. I think um, what really surprised you, know, they started slow uh, when the season took on. But, you know, when, um, you know, as, as, as the season progressed, they, they started picking up. And for them to beat New South once they for them to beat New South Wales at Concord in the semis, I, I knew they were going to win the competition. The the way they they came out, you know, even that, in that game, the Tars came out pretty guns blazing. Everyone kind of thought, well, you know, this game's you know, already in the bag for the Tars. But you know, they showed that that um, they never give up attitude, and um, they came up with the win. And you know, obviously went up to to Townsville, which probably suited the way they play, um, which so, sorry suited the the climate they play in. So. You know, with feet being so humid as well, just like up in Townsville, you know, it kind of suited them. And, uh, you know, heaven behold, they uh, they came away with the win. So, look, really proud for, um, really proud of them, um, you know, and, and their commitment 
to to go through what they went through and then to win the championship. But again, it leads down to Fijiana, and, and this is one game I, I you know I can't wait, and I'm def you know who I'm I'm rooting for the Fijiana women's team. I can't wait. I'll be down there early to watch it. So hopefully the girls can put in a great show, and you know do, you know I'm sure they'll do their country proud. Now, the Force hosts the Brumbies in an all-Aussie affair in Perth to uh, wrap up week 13. Force hoping to maintain their unbeaten record home. It'll be a, a tough that one, uh, tough one that one, because the Brumbies just seem to know how to win, don't they? Yeah, yeah, Clucky. Yeah, again, the Brumbies are probably the, um, you know, one of the form teams. And, you know, as much as they won't be taking um, this lightly, you just can't see it you know, not happening that they're, they're going to go down. So, sorry, that they're, that they're going to win. Um, the Brumbies are, again, they're, they're probably the, your more complete side. Um, the set piece strong up front. And, you know, I think when you get, a, when you've got a strong set piece, you know, it, it makes it your life a lot easier, you know, um, as, as, as a back line, but as a whole team in general. Yeah. Well, that's week 13. And, folks, our special guest on Clarkie's Corner is Fijian star Namani Ndolo. He's hanging up the boots at the end of the season. I mentioned before, Burgoyne, Exeter, NEC Green Rockets, Montpellier, uh, Leicester Tigers. Mate, you've packed a lot in since 2008, throw in the uh, well, Crusaders, of course. Any regrets? Uh, would you do anything differently? Um, <clears throat> Clarkie, no. I wouldn't change a thing. I guess it's probably what's made me, um, you know, who the, the person I am today and, you know, the, the like you said, since 2008, a lot of many life lessons that I've learned along the way, and you know, who knows what, what would have happened if I had hung around here, even if you know if something didn't come on. But no regrets, mate. I, I got the opportunity to to you know end up playing for my country, and um, you know, something that you know I hold um, dear to my heart. Every time I see anything to do with Fiji, so. Yeah, it's, it's been a great career, and um, like I said, it, it's been. It's, I set out everything I wanted to do within my, within within the things that I control, could control, and um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. So um, yeah, definitely no regrets. Thirty-two tests for the Flying Fijians, uh, twenty-two tries at last count, so a great strike rate. Uh, you must look back in your inter national career with a great deal of satisfaction and um, I, I think you still might be if not the leading try scorer for the flying fiji and certainly around the top as well good times 100 percent, like i said you know it's it's um when you go when you play when you play for your club it's obviously you're getting paid and you know it's your job in some sense but you're still enjoying it um yeah you know, and you're you know you we live a privileged life sort of thing but i think the one thing that really I guess um, made me enjoy or made me realize the simple things in life was when I played for Fiji because, you know, there'll be some times where things, you know, kit wouldn't rock up on time or, um, you know, we probably travel badly or, you know, it's just a lot of things, a lot of hiccups along the way. But the one thing I really enjoyed is you generally played for the jersey. And when you played for the jersey, it was like, you know, there was no money that came with it. There was no fame. It was you were literally playing for your people as well. and. I think that's what kept me coming. There'll be a few years where, you know, I paid my own airfare to get to 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 go play for Fiji. But I love that. Like, I, it's not like you didn't complain. Like, this is what it meant because the feeling you got playing for Fiji is so different that it's it's you know you, words couldn't describe it. Um, um, you know, and that's one thing I when I when I retired, the first thing that came to my mind was that was that the satisfaction is will be that I got from playing for my country. And uh, fortunately enough, I got to play for him, you know, over the span of 10 years. And um, again, it's it's definitely something, um, you know, I'll always look back on. And, you know, even though I played for a lot of clubs, I'm grateful that I got to still represent my country along the way. One Rugby World Cup, that was 2015. I think you retired just before 2019's World Cup and then you came back for another couple of appearances. But uh, would you put your hand up again as Simon Rawalui? Got on the phone and said, "Nemsi, we need you." <laughs> well, if my country calls me, Lucky, I'll never say no. So I might have a few aching parts in the body, but like I said, you know, I I I'd do that all over again. And uh, you never say never, mate. But uh, Clarky, I, I I think we both we both know that uh, 
the winger department is not lacking at all. <laughs> Whether it's in Fiji or playing for the Drua or playing in Europe, I'm pretty sure they're going to be okay. But if it does come to that, Simon, I'm here, mate. You know where to find me. <laughs> Who are the best players you've played against? Give me a couple. Best players I've played against, um, I would have to say, uh, there's, there's a lot. Um, well, Saki Naholo, he was someone that, um, you know, it was always hard to contain. Julian Savia, top of my head, another another guy, big. Um, Josh Tuisova, you know, these guys are um, guys that, you know, they, they, they're hard to tackle, but uh, no, the, yeah, the, these they're the sort of guys that have, that would probably um I guess wouldn't be wasn't hard but like it was more of a um you know they were very how do I say this they were probably a highlight and it's, it's a game that I got really that I really enjoyed playing against because you know they're some of the best players in the world and that's where you want to you know test yourself so yeah there'd be those players the best players you've played with you mentioned McCaw and Carter so. Forget about them for the time. Yeah, they're, they're I think they're in, a, they're in an elite uh, level of their own. You know, obviously, you got Carter and and um, uh, McCaw, Kieran Reid. I think he's, he's he'd be up there. And then I've, you know, you got Ben Youngs from England. You've got um, Chris Ashton. I think Chris Ashton for me was probably, um, you know, one of the guys. Um, you know, I I really respected. I forgot to play with him at Leicester. Francois. Francois Stein, got to play with him Montpellier, Rouen Pina. Um, you know, th- these guys are household names. So, th- th- you know, it made your job a lot easier playing alongside these guys. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, as I mentioned at the start, no titles for the Fiji Sevens in Toulouse. The men finished a disappointing ninth, but they did enough to secure an automatic spot at next year's Paris Olympics. So, congratulations to Ben Gollings and his squad. Uh, the Fiji women, they finished to eighth and missed automatic Olympic qualification. So, so Namadi Fiji Sevens, still a work in progress. Fans aren't used to that, are they? They really have to really knuckle down now and get things right because the Olympics are next year. Yeah, Clarky, one hundred percent. You know the, uh, you know when you when you when you think of Fiji, you think Fiji Sevens, and uh, you know those guys are. I guess the how do I say they're the they're the golden child of the of the country. Um, so to to see them not sort of. I guess to see them underperforming or not, you know not to the standard that they would like to be is I wouldn't say it's disappointing but I think it's more you know you 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 feel for them as well you just you know hopefully whatever it is that they they're trying to do that they they you know they nail nail it soon because like you said the the Olympics is around the corner um Fiji's obviously two-time Olympic champions and you know, I think, uh, look, the thing with the Fiji 7, I think we just got to be, have faith in them. You, and, uh, you know, they'll come good. They'll come right. So I haven't, to be honest, watched too many. I've just watched some of the highlights of it. And, you know, um, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll they'll start clicking. But like you said, things aren't probably going the way they want it to be uh, for whatever reason. But, you know, I think as, 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 as a nation, as a supporter, as a fan, I think we should really get behind them and, um, you know, get behind them and support these guys because, you know, again, they sacrifice a lot and, you know, you, you got to give credit um, for for their sacrifice and, you know, and, and the stuff that they go through to get to where they are. So don't write them off. Um, come, you know, I think they'll come good come um, the Olympics next year. And obviously the Fiji women's team, you know, obviously didn't qualify. I'm, I'm sure they'll be very disappointed. But again, um, you know, it, it's, it's not the end of the world and um, these guys will come good. Yeah, the women will get an opportunity to to qualify going through the the regional uh, tournaments, no doubt. Uh, mate, we could talk forever, but that's about uh, time for for this week. Uh, really want to thank you for your time, Namani. Uh, mate, good luck with the rest of the the final season. Congratulations on what has been a great career. We look forward to your next chapter. Uh, uh, do you think you can take your YouTube channel, the Nandolos, um, to the world, emulate Harry and Meghan, maybe? <laughs> I'm not sure Harry and Megan. I, I, I think they're in the bad books from some from what I've heard. But uh, yeah, look, we've definitely um, we've been quiet lately. Obviously, 
with the move and stuff. But you know, look, I'll have a bit more time on my hands. And um, well, finally, my wife and I were just talking about we've got we've been making a lot of videos, so hopefully we can post them out uh, pretty soon. And um, but yeah, that's definitely definitely on the on the cards, Clarky. We'll uh, we'll definitely be bringing that back out. Okay, and uh, you're not playing uh, this week from uh, what I can gather, but you will be commenting. So uh, we look forward to um, your comments um, on uh, Saturday night from Allianz Stadium. Thanks, Clarky. Well, I'm learning from the best, mate. Uh, every time I watch the game, the Drew game, sometimes I just I don't watch the game. I just listen to your voice. So, you know, I'm learning from the best, mate. Yeah, oh, mate. You've uh, certainly got some runs on the board on the field, so hopefully you'll be able to express yourself uh, even better and you're doing a great job with that as well going forward. Uh, all the best, uh, and uh, thank you again for joining us. And all the best to the Fijiana 15s in their f test against the Wallaroos in Sydney Saturday night. Good luck to the Swire shipping Fiji and Drua. It's their final away game in the regular season against the Tars uh, also on Saturday night, so it's a big Fiji doubleheader. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Greg Clark. Bye for now. Mulvane.